This video shows the virtual locust jumping. When the simulation starts, the locust is positioned just above the ground and it falls nicely into position. The first part of the jump is a flexion of the tibia. After that, the flexor and the much more powerful extensor muscles are contracted simultaneously. The smaller flexor is able to keep the tibia locked in place against the massive force of the extensor muscle because the flexor wraps over a lump at the end of the tibia and this changes the angle of its force application, giving it a mechanical advantage over the extensor muscle. The extensor muscle is much larger, but it's also much slower. It takes between 800 and 1000 milliseconds for it to reach its full tension of 15 newtons. As it's doing this, energy for the jump is being stored primarily in two places. The first is in the stretch of the tendon-like structures of the extensor muscle. The second is by bending a bow-like projection on the femur. After the energy is stored, inhibitor neurons are activated that inhibit the flexor motor neurons and also the flexor muscle directly. This allows the flexor muscle to become slack so the locus doesn't try to rapidly stretch it while it's still contracting. That would fight against the rapid extension of the tibia that's needed for the jump and it would be catastrophic for the flexor muscle. Once the tension in the flexor goes below a certain value, the tibia extends and propels the locus through the jump.